Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. I hope you all are doing well. It's so nice to have you all with us again today. Welcome to Packaging MEA's webinar series. The topic for today's webinar is Evolving EV Curing Technology for Flexible Package Printing and Coating. The packaging industry is currently seeing a huge trend where brand owners are moving towards more SKUs, shorter runs, and frequent design changeovers. Selecting the right printing, converting, and allied systems that are flexible and adaptable is key to success. In this webinar, industry experts will share valuable insights with three, three key takeaways. Number one, fast-growing, sustainable, flexible print for packaging spurred by contemporary CI Flexo and CI Web Offset technologies using EB curing technology, in-depth analysis of Comexi Offset CI Evolution technology and GelFlex EB Flexo, a wet trap EB Flexo ink designed for CI Flexo press application, and also how brand owners and print converters can reach their maximum potential with an affordable EB solution that meets today's flexible packaging print challenges. So without much ado, I'd like to introduce the speakers for this evening. Uh, to start the presentation, to start this uh, webinar, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Jody Puch, who is a brand manager and uh, business development flexo for Comexi. So Jody is an industrial engineer specialized in mechanics with an MBA program, and he has several patents in the flexo graphic field. And Jody has been working for more than 25 years in Comexi, where he has held the positions of head of projects in R&D, technical director of the Flexo business unit, and now brand manager and business development Flexo within the printing business unit. Over to you, Jody, for your presentation, for your interesting insights into this world of AB Flexo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ben, for your keen presentation. Let me see if I can share my uh, presentation and uh, we can start. So I think, Ben, you need to give me permission to share my screen. Okay. Uh, hope uh, everybody seeing my screen now. It's okay. Okay. Let me put uh, this uh, as a laser. So, okay. So, I will talk to you about Flexo EV and our Comexi solutions for sustainable printing. But Comexi has already made my presentation, so I will skip this. But I want to introduce you a little bit of Comexi. Who is Comexi? Comexi, we want to be your partner for flexible packaging converting. We are a global supplier for the printing and converting processes on the flexible packaging. We are a company, a family-owned company with nearly 70 years of existence. We are uh, in Catalonia, in Spain, and, but we operate worldwide. Our main values, and it's not casuality that it's the first one, is sustainability, humanism, excellence, and commitment. Sustainability is our main value, it's our first priority, and this is the reason of this webinar also. We are more than 400 employees with more than 100 million in sales, and we dedicate a lot of our turnover to R&D investment, because we think innovation is a key factor also in our business. Uh, as I said, we are located in Catalonia, in the north of Spain, where we have our headquarters, we have our main manufacturing plant, we have our CTEC to make demonstrations and technical trainings to our customers, but we also have another manufacturing plant and another CTEC in Brazil, where we manufacture for the, uh, mainly for the local area and for some export, and we also have we have offices in North America, we have Comex in North America, where we have uh, our sales uh, area and also another technical center to make demonstrations, to make training to our customers. We operate, as I said, in more than 100 countries with more than 2,000 customers and nearly 5,000 machines installed. As a global supplier, we cover the printing and converting processes. We cover printing, we, see, we will see today that we cover flexo and offset printing, we cover lamination and coatings, and we can do lamination in solvent, solvent-less, water-based, even holography. And we cover also the sweeting, so we cover until the finish of it. We have, of course, technical services, digital services, and we have a very powerful technological center 
to help you to uh, evolve with the new technologies. So our technological center is especially uh, specialized in uh, helping to our customers for the new technologies, for the new developments to adopt newer technologies. Let's see what we will talk about. We will talk about sustainability, about the flexible packaging impact in the sustainability, and why we think that the flexible printing is the right approach, how we will propose this, and which is our added value. Why we think sustainability is a need? So I have taken as an example the Global Risk Reports 2021, which is published by the World Economic Forum. And they make every year an analysis of which are the top global risks by likelihood, let's say, which is much probably to happen. And if we see this, this picture, you will see that starting 2016, every year the, the main risks have been evolving in the way that can be related to the pollution and to the human action. So we started extreme weather, natural disasters, 2018. Then we added the climate action fiber. In 2020, we were already with the biodiversity loss and human-made environmental disasters. 2021, we have the infectious disease. It's logical because of the COVID, but mainly we are still with uh, all these disasters or all these uh, risks uh, related to the pollution and human action. And following with the same report, if we see the global emissions and warming goals, we see that since 1990, we have been increasing constantly the emissions of CO2. The emissions of CO2 had a recession during the financial crisis in 2008, but it was very small, then it continued to grow. We had a recession, a big recession now with the COVID, but, and it's expected to be 8% about, but if we do not do nothing, we will early return to the trend to the trend of increasing the temperature. If we want to go below the target of two degrees that it was expected of its uh, our desire, we should go in this way. So we go in an opposite way. If we want to keep between 1.5, still more strict. So it's clear that there is something that we need to do in terms of sustainability. And which is the flexible packaging impact there? So is, is our industry making an impact and yes which the impact we are doing we have several impacts so the first one that we can see is the bocs emissions during printing processes and how can we go against this we can reduce the solvent use and we will see that today this is one of the tendencies that we can help you to reduce the solvent use in the printing process another is the co2 emissions due to the waste elimination it can be because of the energy consumption dedicated to eliminate the waste or even the plastic and solvents which are burn, burning. A uh, way well, it's to reduce the energy consumption, also to reduce the solvent use, but also to reduce the plastic content. And finally, there is the direct contamination due to the bad treatment of the waste. And this, the easiest way is to reduce the plastic content and recycle it to go to a circular economy. We will see how, thanks to the EV technologies, either if it's flexible or if it's offset, but mainly with the EV printing, we have the right approach to go to this sense. So in terms of Flexo, when we print with Flexo EV inks, uh, we can help to reduce the solvent use. So the Flexo EV inks has less solvent quantity or even they have not solvent at all. And if we talk about offset EV, there is zero solvent at all. In Flexo EV, we apply less quantity of ink also. So the ink is more solid content. It has about 90% of the total content is solid. So it means that we need less quantity of ink. And in this less quantity of ink, there is still less quantity of solvent. So at the end, and if we make a comparison here in this chart, uh, we make a, a frontal printing, we take a white first color, then cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, two spot colors plus an overprint varnish, so uh, a total eight colors job. And taking as a, as a base, a solvent-based machine, machine, typically 1.2 meters, 300 meters per minute, 4,000 years hours a year, with an ink coverage with everything about 400%, we have about 750 tons of, uh, of um, BOCs emitted every year. When we convert this to Gelflex EV ink, which has only uh, 10 to 15% of solvents, we can reduce this by 85%. So we are in 650. When we go to the Wetflex EV or we want to the offset, which has zero solvents, we can reduce 100% of this. So it's clear that using EV inks, either if it's Gelflex, Wellflex, or if it's offset, 
we can reduce the solvent use, we can work in the terms of reducing the impact that our uh, industry makes to the environment. Another point, we said reducing energy consumption. The system, this is the machine, in the picture you can see the machine that uh, we have in our CTEC that we use to print with the uh, Wexo printing EV inks. The system works and we will be deeply explained later by in Rangwawa or by Mike or from INX. The system works that instead of making a evaporation of solvents, what you do is a curing, an instant curing in this equipment, in this EV equipment of all the inks. So when we compare, we compare the energy that we need to make this curing compared with the traditional solvent or water-based printing where we have uh, burners to heat the air and we have a lot of air to evaporate the solvents, when we make this comparative test with the same job, we print in gel things or we print in solvent things, we have been saying savings up to 50% in energy consumption. We need to think that with the EV, we only use electric energy push nitrogen, and with the solvent things, we need electric energy push gas to make uh, the, the burners to heat the air. And this 50% even can go up to 60% with the offset EV inks, where there is absolutely zero solvent, so we have a, a reduction in the, uh, in the energy consumption. Also, there is a reduction of processes, so we can replace lamination, we will be later on, or apply OPVs in all, all in one shot, and this leads also to a direct energy saving because we have less processes. So, once more, the Flexo EV is helping us to reduce the energy consumption. And third point was to reduce plastic content and recycle. Uh, if we think at, about the traditional structure we have, which is the uh, polyester reverse printed and laminated onto an LDPE. This structure, which is very common and very typical, it's quite difficult to recycle because it has a mix of two different families of plastics. To avoid this and to make this easy recycle, thanks to the EV technology, we can move and we can convert this to different structures. First thing is, if we want to keep the uh, laminated structure, we can go to a PEMDO with the EV ink laminated onto a LDP. With this, we have a structure with two layers, but with a mono material. This we can do thanks to the properties that the EV curing process gives to the PE and increasing his temperature surface. But also what we can do is to use only a co-extruded PE with high barrier, print an EV on top, frontal printing with the EV OPV. And the EV OPV will give us the properties of a scratch resistance of glossy on all the properties that we are obtaining from the PET. Or even we can imagine to use a paper with a sealant coating and go to the uh, EV ink and EV OPV. So all these structures we can do thanks to the, uh, the EV using. This I will not go deep on that because my colleague Fabib, when we, he will talk about offset, he will explain for you much in deep all these technologies. But this is something that we can obtain either if it's offset or if it is Flexo EV printing. Which is the status of the art of the Flexo EV? Flexo EV is something which is really uh, known since years in the in the market, but uh, I have to say that uh, it has been evolving very fast during the last three, four, five years. Today, we have two technologies for the Flexo EV. We have a technology which is called Gelflex, which is a proprietor. ESI is the patent proprietor. And we have another technology which is called Wetflex, which is from Sanchemica. The Gelflex technology is something which is licensed to INX Sakata, Wyckoff, and Sigbert as a in manufacturer. So it means that we have different ink suppliers, we have availability of different inks, and we have competence between them to develop these inks. This is a wet-on-wet -wet application with final curing, as we explained, and it has about 10 to 15 percent of solvent, so it requires some intercolor drying. And at the end, we have the final curing with the EV equipment. If we go to the wet flex, it's a technology that only can be offered by some chemical, and this is creating some kind of uh, less, let's say, less evolving of this technology because there is only one supplier. It's also a wet-on-wet -wet application. The properties of highest quality dot gain, X7 optical and physical are the same. And this, instead of having this 10 of 15 percent of solvent, what we have is a 10 or 15 percent of water. It has also to be evaporated between cores. And at the end, we need the EV equipment. Which are the advantages of this flexible EV printing? 
we have said that EB Inks has 80 to 100 percent of Soviet content. So this high percentage of Soviets allows us to print with the highest quality lines and to have the best quality. It's difficult to show just in a picture, not in a real printing, but we can have the highest density because we have a high pigment quantity and we can have a minimum ink light down. So this allows us to give a very strong colors, a very nice, for example, this very nice black tear together with the best highlights and best uh, nice gradients to almost zero. Why? Because we have a solid ink with a very small dot gain. So we are able to do this kind of combinations. And also the curing process when we print from printing gives the highest physical properties. So we have physical properties of a wrap, a scarf and abrasion, but also chemical resistance. So this allows us to replace the reverse printing and a lamination by a surface printing as we mentioned earlier. When we think that we can replace this lamination by a frontal printing, we go one step ahead because when we look from printing, we can apply the OPV over print varnish and cool all together. So you can imagine that you can combine even in this picture is not easy seen, but this picture has this area which is a glossy, um, a, a glossy varnish and this area which is a matte varnish. So we can combine different varnishes. We can combine matte, glossy, and even optic finishing all in one sheet, in one shot. So no need of any additional process. You can have in one shot a front printing with different finishings, which today with other inks is not possible because you print reverse. So it means that you need to make a reprint and you need to make different processes. So this also leads to a less global cost when you think in the full picture. So even if EV Corabo inks are more expensive than solvent inks, but there is less quantity of ink. And if we look at the total packaging and we consider not just the printing process, we need to consider the, the complete process. And you need to consider that we eliminate processes like lamination or we eliminate the second prints for the overprint varnishes, then we can have reductions up to 20%. So this is another advantage of the Flexo EV. Which is our proposal? Our proposal is this machine. This machine is the machine we have in our CTEC. This is a hybrid machine, we will see. This is a machine which has the ESI equipment to make the curing. This is a machine where we have modified the drying system in order to have a drying after the first deck for the first lie down. And then we have only air, no heat for the other decks in the intercover drying. We have no channel. We have channel, but we are not using the channel for the gel fixings. On the central drum, we have changed the uh, regulation of the temperature to facilitate the gelification, and we have our genius drive that gives the best longitudinal registration to use for the extended cover gamut to use the maximum of the, um, let's say, the properties of the small dot gains on the qualities that we can have with the gel flex inks. Also, we have modified the inking system for sure, genius flow and genius doctoring to apply this kind of things. This is the machine we have on the CTEC, and this is a hybrid machine. It's a hybrid proposal where we can print gel flex or wet flex, we can print solvent based, and also we can print water based. So you need to imagine this is the unwinder. You go to this path, you go to the printing unit, and after printing, if you are printing just with solvent or water based, you will skip this unit and you will go to the cooling cylinders and you will go to the rewinder. But if you are printing with gel flex inks, you are going through the ESI equipment and you make the curing and then you go to the coving cylinder. I will take advantage of this seminar to tell that this machine, which you can see here, this is the machine that we have in our CTEC. We will be moving this machine at the end of this year. Comexi, we are uh, making a launching of a new CTEC that uh, probably you have seen on the LinkedIn or on some announcements. Next week, we are making the official presentation of the new CTEC. And on the new CTEC, we will have a new machine with a new ESI equipment uh, to have uh, more properties and more powerful equipment to experiment better and to work better with the Gelflex uh, inks. And this machine at this moment is, it will be sold by the end of the year. So in case you are interested to have a machine for an immediate delivery with the ability to apply ESI, uh, to apply Gelflex inks, to apply a hybrid inks, then this is the right machine for you. So I take advantage of this. And then, which is our added value out of that? So I explained to you this machine. This is an eight-color machine, but we can offer you this solution with a full range of machines. Our range of machines starts with the 
300 meters per minute for the Flexo F4 or Flexo F2 MS, which are with the small repeats, machines very adapted to the short runs. Then we can increase to 400 meters per minute. This is the, the, the speed that we will, we will be able to run with the Gelflex Inks starting next year with the new equipment. And then we can run up to F2 MLs or F2 MPS 500 and even the F1. So this is not yet available with Gelflex, but all these machines we can offer you with the Gelflex solutions. On all these machines, you can find our Genius Tech Technologies. Genius Tech Technologies that allow you to have a high and easy quality printing. So our machines are very robust and stable with a lot of automation, with a high quality setup and with a lot of industry 4.0 solutions. We also have taken care with these Genius Tech solutions to increase the machine uptime with the quick changeovers, with the fast and reliable setup and with ergonomic operation. And for sure, and this is the objective of today, the sustainable printing with efficiency and energy control Solving water-based printing and curable inks, as we have shown, our approach is to make hybrid machines, machines where you can be sustainable, but not changing radically today your technologies. So you can be adapting step by step to your new technologies. As a conclusion, it is clear that flexible packaging industry, we have to make a movement towards sustainability. And this movement has not to be just to create sustainable packaging, recyclable packaging, but also making all the creation process to be sustainable. So taking care of the energy, taking care of the BOCs. We have a clear compromise with sustainability and we all work to give solutions to the industry. And Flexo EV printing, thanks to this reduction in BOCs and the CO2 emissions during the printing process, we think it's the most sustainable way to create a package. And also with the Flexo EV printing, thanks to the properties of the OPV varnishes, and thanks to the cross-linking of the material due to the curing process, it makes it easier to convert these existing structures with different materials to monomaterial structures or even monolayer structures. So it leads to a reduced consume of plastic and increased recyclability. So we are covering all the steps where we have said this uh, flexible packaging industry is creating, let's say, problems to sustainability. And we think that Comexi has the best solution to start printing with Fix OEB. Thanks to our long experience, we can help and lead you to adoption of this novel technology. And that's all for my part. Thank you very much. Uh, here you have my uh, email, jordi.puch at comexi.com. Uh, if you have any question that cannot be answered at the end of this uh, webinar, uh, I, have, uh, I am at your disposal. You can directly email me with the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I give back the controls to Ben to continue with the webinar. Many thanks, uh, Jody, for your wonderful presentation. It was uh, very informative, and thank you very much. And uh, I just want to just highlight on the three important points that you dwe were dwelling in your presentation. Sustainability, reduced energy consumption, and uh, reducing plastic content and recycling. They were really, uh, you know, the need of the R in our region in the Middle East also. That's something which most of the brand owners and converters are looking at. So I'm sure that the other speakers uh, who are going to present are going to complement your presentation by speaking on the same lines. Right, uh, without much ado, I'd like to go on to the next uh, speaker for the evening. I have the pleasure of inviting uh, Mr. M. Rangwala from Energy Sciences Incorporated. He's a market development manager at Energy Sciences Incorporated, which is uh, uh, more renowned and more uh, easily called as ESI. Uh, M has over 30 years of experience in EB technology and applications with an extensive focus in flexible packaging. And M has an uh, MS Chemical Engineering from Northeastern University in Boston. So over to you, Mr. M, for your presentation. Hello, thank you. Ben, for the pres, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, thank you for the introduction and good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Ben mentions, my name is M. Rangwala and I work at Energy Sciences um, as a market development manager and I will be talking about sustainable packaging with electron beam curing. Just a brief overview to everybody of what, who ESI is. ESI is the world leader for over 50 years in making electron beam equipment technology. We are the world's largest electron beam equipment company 
we are a wholly owned subsidiary of Iwasaki Electric based in Japan. Um, and we were founded right here, basic in, in Boston area, way back in 1970. But the EB technology comes, you know, from the 50s and 60s during during the during the Cold War time as a as as a startup of MIT right here in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And the government was giving a lot of money for for development of, of high, high energy technologies because of the Cold War. And that's where energy sciences were for, was formed. And then it was purchased by Iwasaki Electric later on. Uh, we have global offices based in Boston, Tokyo, and the Netherlands. Just a brief overview uh, of what electron beam technology is, is that how electrons are created and everybody will think that, oh my God, this is very high tech. But as mentioned, it's been around for a very long time and it is a very well established technology with a bulk of its application and flexible packaging, which we will talk about a little bit later. So an energy beam processor is a device that accelerates electrons to high energies and projects them into the substrate. So what you have over here is that what you, is, is the vacuum chamber. So inside the vacuum chamber, you have tungsten filaments and the vacuum over here is very, very high. You're talking about 10 to the minus six, 10 to the minus seven Tor vacuum. These tungsten filaments, which were in the light bulb technology, as you may know way back, when Edison developed the light bulb technology, tungsten was used and that tungsten filaments are heated to very high temperatures. You're talking about 2,300, 2,400 degrees centigrade. At that high temperatures, what happens is that you get a cloud of electrons surrounding the, the, the tungsten filament. Now that the, 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 the electrons are negatively charged and you apply a positive voltage. And when you apply a positive voltage, you extract the electrons from here, from the tungsten filament over here, and then you accelerate them. And when you accelerate them, it comes out from the vacuum chamber through a very thin titanium foil. Um, and then, uh, which is supported on a water-cooled copper body, and then it comes out into the process zone. And the web is is moving right here, and then and then all it's the web containing the EB ink, coating, or or film, or whatever you're trying to cure, sees the electrons, and almost instantaneously, I'm talking about milliseconds of reaction time. Um, it it goes from from liquid to to 100% solids so that you can touch it and you see over here that this idler roller is touching it uh, almost immediately product is moving at high speeds over here and it's touching it within within less than a second and it is fully cured you have nitrogen which is which is required uh, for for two reasons one to get rid of the ozone because electrons will create ozone and the other thing is to is to reduce um, the oxygen inhibition um, which which restricts the polymerization reaction um, of the of the inks and coatings um, so you keep the nitrogen in the process zone close to about less than 150 parts per million Now, as mentioned before, electron beam curing is not new. It has been around for a very, very long time. And it is used in various different industries for cross-linking rubber tires to pressure sensitive adhesive tapes and all that. But a big chunk of EB curing is in packaging. I want to estimate about uh, close to about 60% of our all our applications is in packaging. Now, one would ask is that, that what EB curing is done in packaging. There are, these are the applications in EB, for EB curing in packaging. EB curing of coatings for replacing laminates, like a little bit like what Jody touched upon, is that if you have a two-layer laminate, you go from a from a top layer, uh, you take the top layer film out, surface printed, and put an EB lacquer, and that print can be conventional rotogravure print, like what you see in this in this Mars candy application, which has been going on for a very long time, or this Scott's lawn and garden application. Mars is a is a conventional solvent-based rotogravure ink with an EB coating on top, replacing a OPP, OPP laminate. And uh, the Scott's lawn and garden is, was also a laminate, but now it is surface print with solvent-based flexo inks and then put an EBO print varnish. So that's been going around for a very long time. 
Also EB curing of inks, EB curing of offset inks, for example, for inline offset inks for paper board type of applications um, has been around for since the 1980s with several ink suppliers all around the world providing EB offset ink technology. Tetra Pak, for example, had one time close to about 25 electron beam machines all around the world of curing EB offset inks on their paper board for the Tetra brick and, and various other type of applications. But what is new now is offset CI and um, and which we will hear a lot, a lot more later on from Philippe. And that is, that is I, I don't even want to say it is new because it's been around for a while it's with several commercial applications already all around the world. And, but it has some good advantages. That means because of the CI technology, it can allow, take all the benefits of offset and, 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 and provide some be benefits of the CI technology specifically to run extensible films. Also, EBCI flexo inks and surface print or reverse print, um, uh, like what Jody explained, specifically the gel flex technology. Again, that is not new. It's been around with for a few years with with uh, several commercial applications all around the world. But nevertheless, it is new, driven by sustainability to reduce VOC. And the other thing is EB curing of digital links, which is not commercial yet, but a lot of people are looking at it because they say that that is going to be the future. Um, so, so we are working with ink suppliers and developing EB curing of digital links as well. But EB cross-linking of films, again, this is not a new technology. Since the development of EB in the 60s and 70s, like what I mentioned, this high barrier shrink film bag application which you see over here was already commercialized and we have close to over 100 EB machines doing that today. Sealed Air, Cryovac introduced this technology way back then and it's been commercial with several applications already. But what is new is this vacuum skin performance film technology which is, which is the VSP. We just had a webinar about about 10 days ago on this and it was extremely well received and the main value proposition over here is food wastage. The VSP technology reduces food wastage and which which actually creates a lot of carbon dioxide emission um, uh, is, is restricted tremendously with VSP in addition a better presentation. But also taking the same concept of improving the temperature resistance as required by EB cross-linking of high barrier shrink film bags for the VSP is this MDO and BOPE films, again, driven by sustainability and recyclability, which we will talk about, which looks very interesting. And, um, and combining that with EB curing can be a great path forward. Finally, also EB curing of laminating adhesives, which looks very promising, um, but, um, well, specifically because of instantaneous cure, we do have few applications, but the market growth has been limited in that in that area. Now, as I mentioned, that we will hear a lot more later on, but um, I wanted to just touch base on um, on EB offset inks, this the new technology from Comexi using the CI drum based technology. What are the benefits? Short runs, which you heard from Ben, which is a big, huge market driver right now. No VOC again for sustainability. Excellent, excellent print quality. Lowest carbon footprint because of lower energy consumption uh, of EB, including the nitrogen. And I do have some hardcore numbers. If you want, you can contact me later on and I can share that those numbers with you. Um, allows surface printing and reduces plastic. CI8 allows printing on extensible films, which is huge because even gravuring printing as well as inline offset printing does not allow that to happen. Uh, but CI flexo technology, uh, so CI offset techno uh, technology allows that very well. It also provides perfect registration and then cost effective across multiple runs. Let us give, let me give you a brief introduction on the EBCI Flexo Inc. technology which Jody touched upon and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and you will hear a lot more from Mike Sadak 
uh, from INX as from the ink supplier. How does it work? So basically the gel flex technology is a two part system. It is a gel and a solvent. Like what was explained, it has about 15% solvent in there. The solvent evaporates, it goes through the Hansen solubility parameters. And as the solvent evaporates, the gel gets formed and immediately hardens and allows wet trapping over the different colors of ink and then EB curing right at the end uh, after that. EB provides final cross link and cure. Gelflex benefits 90% reduction in solvent because of high viscosity and less solvent in the inks, you get high print quality, like was mentioned, high print resolution, close to even 60, 70 LCM. You can do surface or reverse print, lowest energy consumption, first down white as well as last down white are all EB curable and ECG colors are also available. Runnability is quite high, 400 meters per minute. Long runs greater than 20,000 linear meters have been done and are being done at our customer sites. Um, it is retrofitable, EB can be retrofitted to, 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 to existing CI flex suppressors. Um, we don't need interstation heat drying nor an e uh, overhead dryer. You, you need finer analogs because, because you got such less solvent in there. Uh, you need stronger pumps, stronger mixers, and all the other bells and whistles which were described by, by Jody Pooj from Comexi as the Comexi CI Flexo Press offers. Just a brief overview on how this thing works. So the Gelflex EBCI Flexo is a drum-based technology which I mentioned. And um, and so, so basically what you do is that you put down in a conventional CI flexo press, you put down first color, then you heat it, dry off the solvent, put down the second color, and then dry off the solvent and so on. And then everything goes on over an overhead dryer. But with with the gel flex uh, EB CI flexo technology, what happens is that you don't need heat interstation. You just need room temperature air, just to mention to dry off that 10-15% that of the solvent in there, form the gel, and then the second color can just sit right on top of it, provide the required trapping, and then everything. And you can even put an EB overprint varnish. We've got installations where people are putting two or different color matte and gloss varnish on, on the last. So if you have a 10 color press, you can put seven ECG and put a matte and a gloss varnish in, in a register to give you the shelf appeal and then cure everything in the end with the electron beam technology, which is right here. But let us concentrate on what sustainability, which is the main market focus and the market needs and where electron beam fits in. So the re to reduce, reuse and recycle all at a reduced cost. As Jody mentioned, and actually this has been the beauty of flexible packaging. That is why we see a growth in flexible packaging, snatching away, away products from, from you know, um, uh, rigid packaging into things like this, pouches and all that, because the ability of flexible packaging to combine different materials like a polyester to provide a little bit of barrier clarity, high temperature resistance, uh, uh, sturdiness, uh, or OPP and then a coax PE, put a EVOH barrier in there. So you, so, so you can replace a lot of this rigid packaging by combination of these different materials um, to provide, provide the needs of, of packaging through flexible packaging. That is why you see a great growth in flexible packaging. But unfortunately, these combination of different materials, which you see on my left for this, this, this structure right here makes it very, very difficult for recyclability. It is al almost impossible because it is this similar materials. So the, there's a whole thrust to move to mono-based materials by using uh, oriented polyethylene, biaxially oriented polyethylene or an MDO polyethylene. So people like the, the extrusion and the machine suppliers from that end have done a really a fantastic job, if you ask me. They have taken the polyethylene and, and stretched it in the machine direction and allowed that polyethylene 
to behave a lot more like polyester in terms of rigidity, in terms of clarity. So you can replace that polyester or an OPP and then reverse print it and then adhesive laminate it with a coax OPE. So you can replace all that with the um, with um, uh, with um, with the mono material structure on my right, and this is driving a lot of interest globally. And uh, there's a lot of commercial applications, and the resin suppliers like the Dow's and Exxon's and all that are extremely extremely interested in this approach, and they are uh, spending a lot of resources to 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 develop this further. But if you look at it. If you look at this structure, there is still one issue: is that you are making a monomaterial structure, you are making a, it recyclable, but you still have solvent-based ink over here. And that was another thing which the sustainability mandate was: is to reduce carbon footprint, to, to reduce VOCs. But if you are using solvent-based inks, either gravure or flexo, then you have 60-70 percent solvent in there. It is not. It is still not sustainable um, from from that perspective. So our option is is that is that instead of using solvent based inks, why not move to EB offset or EB flexo inks? So you will reduce your solvent to almost zero or reduce it by 90% by using uh, EB flexo inks and and leave everything else the same and that that. That, and, and in addition to that, what we will also do is that you will reduce the amount of energy which is required. As I mentioned, that I can I can share some of that numbers with you as well of how much energy is being used with electron beam versus um, versus um, a standard seven color job running CI Flexo technology. But now. As I mentioned, what uh, before is that EB is used for a lot for EB cross-linking of polyethylene, and that e one of the main reasons for cross-linking of polyethylene is to provide the temperature resistance. Now, if I'm making an OPE or by BOPE or an MDOPE right on the, as my top layer, that temperature resistance is 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 still not low. It is not. Nowhere compared to polyester, or not, nowhere even compared to OPP. So what is happening is that as the heat seal bars are coming to for during a, a VFFS type of uh, filling processes, the heat seal bars are getting stuck to the. Yes, you you may be putting an HDP or something which has a little bit higher higher uh, per MFI uh, than um, um, uh, a melt index than a standard LDPE, but still, no, nevertheless, it is still low. And you you might you will run into into this uh, uh, stickiness problem. So one option is 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 to EB crosslink the polyethylene as well whilst you are curing the ink. So once you crosslink the polyethylene, you get that temperature increase um, because of the crosslinking nature of the polyethylene. And what we have shown is that this structure in the right. What we have taken it is that we have along uh, with Dow, we have taken that material and then EB crosslinked it, ran it through packaging lines and showed that it performs better than the uncrosslinked mono material type of structure and and it is recyclable as well. It is not fully you know, circular economy because you can't put it back into food packaging, but you can put it into into garbage bags or something like that. But definitely it can be recyclable following the EU recycle class procedures. Just, I don't want to get too technical over here, but just to show you is that how electron beam technology improves the heat resistance. So what you see over here is uh, basically, oops, what you see over here is um, is um, uh, is a chart of hot tack energy where where the the EB the polyethylene has been exposed to control which is zero megarads or, or zero dose which is the blue one right on top and then at 30 kilogray 60 kilogray 90 kilogray and one and 120 kilogray so after about 30 kilogray between 60 and 90 kilogray the hot tack reduces of the electron uh, of the pe material so much this was for the bope material so much that it almost doesn't stick to each other at all and um, and uh, that, that because of the nature of the EB cross-linking part. 
As mentioned before, there is another option of moving from a multi-layer laminate like a polyester and, and a PE um, to, to a mono-layer structure where you can put, um, put the, the same coax PE, put an e, uh, EB offset ink or an EB flexo ink on top and put an EB print varnish on top of that. Now that EB print varnish provides you almost everything what that polyester or a top layer was providing. And as I mentioned before, is that there are several commercial applications doing that, not with EB, some with EB inks as well, e, either EB offset inks and some with EB flexo inks as well, but a lot also with conventional solvent-based flexo inks or solvent-based gravure inks as well. So what does the EB print varnish provide? The EB print varnish, first of all, is 100% solids, and it can be, it is what is known as free radical polymerization. So, so you can take the choice of materials and, and basically tailor make that formulation to provide you the, the property and properties which you want within reasons. Now, some, somebody say, oh, I want such and such. Now everything can't be achieved, but I'm, that's what I'm saying is that within reasons you can achieve it. So you can get heat resistance. With an EB open varnish, you can get an EB a heat resistance of, I want to say over 200, 250 degrees centigrade. Uh, you can get excellent scuff and abrasion resistance as well. I mean, a lot of our applications similarly uh, driving from the sustainability perspective, the people are moving away from, from melamine, from LDI type of resins for the furniture industry, like the IKEA and all that, to EB open varnish, um, um, technologies and we have several installations and that EB print varnish for the furniture industry gives fantastic, fantastic abrasion resistance because it is designed to provide that. You can control the COF because that, that either OPP or whatever has a controlled COF again to provide you high COF, low COF based on its end product application and as well as glass and matte and everything can be controlled by the formulation of the OPV. And uh, OPV is applied close to between three and four grams per square meter. And the reason why it can do that is because after EB curing, you actually obtain a very highly cross-linked OPV structure forming a three-dimensional type of a cure. So as I mentioned, uh, that there are basically um, uh, two options in moving to a mono. Uh, 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 moving away from a multi-layer laminate, moving to a mono material laminate, where you are curing the inks and cross-linking the films together. In this particular case, so the ink is situated somewhere right on top over here, and then this is your PE film over here. So you want to cross-link the out outside as well as cure the ink. So you need a little bit higher dose. You need between 60 and 90 kilogram of dose, and you need a little bit higher voltage because you need the penetration in there to, to give you the temperature resistance. But on the other hand, if you just want to cross-link the, the, the EB lacquer and cure the ink on a coax polyethylene, you don't want that much electrons to go into the PE film over here because you don't want to damage the heat seal layer over here because again, the SIT will increase, which you don't want to do because of the cross-linking nature. And second thing is you want to keep it, keep energy absorption as low as possible because you want recyclability is the main reason. So the advantage, what I'm trying to say is that you can do the same thing with the same EB picture which you saw is that that EB can be programmed in one case if you are doing a laminate so to, to go operate at a high voltage and high dose and in the other case low voltage and low dose whatever the voltage and dose is we can dial it in and all can be controlled on the same EB with using recipe control so if one day if you're running a laminate you can run uh, certain EB conditions with recipe one, say for example, and the next day if you're running uh, a, a, a surface print, you can run recipe two with, the, with different doors and voltage conditions. Just to reiterate, uh, EB curing is the solution to today's market challenges. Problem recyclability, source reduction, um, reduction of VOC, reduction of, um, of, um, of uh, energy consumption is can be achieved 
by moving from a multi-layer laminate, which is very, very functional, to also very functional mono material laminate using a cross-linked OP, BOPE or an MDOPE using EB offset or flexo inks, conventional adhesive lamination to a coax film. And by the way, you can also put an ALOX, if you don't, uh, you can put also, which we have done some work with, ALOX or SIOX material over here and, and obtain really, really high barrier, barriers uh, doing that and cross-linking the, the, the PE film as well as curing the ink and, um, and in this particular way. Or you can also move to a mono-based technology where you're surface curing the EB inks and EB print varnish. Um, so there are these are the two options which are available for you. And with that, I want to end my presentation. Thank you very much. The, my, this, my contact information is there. And if there are any questions, please contact Ben or you can contact me directly and I can be reached. Thank you. Ben, back to you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rangwala, for your wonderful presentation. It was really enlightening. So we have learned a lot uh, about uh, electron beam uh, this afternoon, and I'm sure our um, our attendees, our uh, delegates who are here, have also been uh, you know updated on the questions that they have. Just one very quick question before we go to the next presenter, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have joined us a bit late, just a quick word. Uh, there's a chat icon on the control panel that you find, so please click on that and you'll find a space to key in your questions for the. Uh, for the speakers this evening. So if you have some uh, questions, we're not giving time for questions between presentations. We are taking it in the end after two more presentations. So if you have some questions, kindly uh, put those questions in the chat box and we'll be glad to address them after the presentations. So we go on to the next uh, speaker for the evening. Uh, we have Mike Sadak here uh, with us. He's the R&D lab manager uh, uh, for UE and EV coatings at INX International Inc. Company. So Mike is a R&D lab manager at INX uh, with nearly 25 years of experience formulating UV and EV curable inks and coatings. He's currently the product development uh, for, is leading the product development for INX uh, EV flexor system utilizing gel flex EV technology, which will be highlighted during this webinar this evening now. And uh, he also previously served as the chairman of uh, RAPTEC and North America Sustainability Committee and has been involved in INX's uh, corporate green team, as well as he's participated as a member of the Sustainable Packaging Coalition. So over to you, Mike, for your presentation this evening. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Um... So, uh, Inkster International is a global supplier of inks, coatings, and digital print technology platform used in a variety of applications. Uh, we have a central mission to deliver innovative, safe, and sustainable solutions uh, to our customers. As a part of our parent company, Cicada Inks, we have a combined as a, a third largest ink manufacturer with over 50 locations worldwide nearly $1.5 billion of global sales. Um, as you can see here with a combination of primary manufacturing locations throughout the world and various distributor partnerships, we're able to supply and support customers globally. In particular, we have several well-established distributors operating in the Middle East and the Africa regions. Um, as the global market for printing has shifted over the years, Inks International has been prepared and able to adapt to meet those changes. Uh, inks and coatings for various packaging types comprise our largest share of business, while the emergence of digital print is a rapidly growing sector for inks. Um, inks International has placed a focus upon sustainability and development of various solutions to meet our customers' and brand owners' needs. It starts with our product development efforts, which continually strive to provide sustainable and innovative solutions by taking environmental impact, worker and consumer health and safety, and product functionality improvements and efficiencies into consideration. Uh, this can be through our production processes where we have continuous improvement programs in place to improve efficiency, reduce waste, and strive to conserve resources. And all of these uh, efforts are part of a corporate strategy to align with the uh, United, Sustainable, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 
Uh, sustainability can mean many different things to different people. So to help frame the discussion, I want to highlight three major focus areas in which EB Inks and coding technology offer opportunities to address sustainability. First, there's a reduction in VOC emissions. This not only helps address air quality and global warming concerns, but it also helps printers address various regulatory requirements. Second, the conservation of resources. Here, there's many elements to consider, whether it's manpower or equipment efficiencies or just simply an overall reduction in carbon footprint. But a topic that's been covered several times a day is the potential for elimination of lamination layers and associated uh, package light weighting that results. Now, some less obvious uh, savings can occur in terms of less ink consumption, as well as modest reduction of transportation expenses. Ultimately, one of the big drivers are economic considerations and improvements to the bottom line. So you can touch upon social, economic, and environmental impacts, uh, all with a single print technology when you consider EB curing technologies. Uh, perhaps we should start with what is the difference between EB and, and solvent or a water-based printing? This is a simple illustration of an ink or coating applied to a substrate. In the case of uh, EB inks, uh, which are illustrated on the left, inks comprise of uh, chemicals referred to as monomers and oligomers, which are liquid. Uh, in the case of UV, an additional chemical called a photoinitiator is added. Now, it's important to note that photoinitiators are not present in EB inks and coatings. Uh, for EB inks, energy is applied in the form of electrons from an electron beam curing unit, and the result is what's applied to the substrate as a liquid instantly turns to a solid print, which can then be processed further immediately. In the case of water or solvent inks, excess ink is applied, ink is, heat is applied, and water or solvent evaporates. And there may be a 50% reduction in, in film weight. Now, in some instances, some cross-linking can occur, but that may occur 24 to 48 hours uh, after. So, one print technology that helps printers and brand owners achieve sustainability opportunities uh, mentioned already are EB offset inks. So one of the big advantages of EB inks over other technologies is consistent degree of cure or drying that's associated with the EB cure technology. So essentially the printer can dial in a target level of energy exposure and the electron beam units programmed to automatically adjust with the press speeds. The other major advantage of EB over uh, UV, for example, is that the degree of cure is not color dependent. Uh, in the case of UV inks, blacks and other dark colors absorb UV light and can make curing dark UV inks or uh, heavy builds difficult to cure. This can lead to various quality related issues and, and those limitations simply don't exist with EB cured inks. Uh, EB inks are compatible with a wide range of substrates and, and can be used in combination with a range of coatings for surface or reverse print scenarios or to use uh, the case of laminations uh, plus, EB offset inks uh, from Inks International have been developed with uh, food packaging in mind. So, low migration or uh, LM inks and coatings, as I'll refer to them, have been designed for compliance to meet various government regulations, whether by United States FDA or the EU framework, uh, the German or Swiss ordinance for food packaging. And additionally, many brand owners have their own guidance notes uh, in EB offset inks offered by. Inks International comply with a range of various brand owner guidelines. Perhaps I should also touch upon you know, what, is, uh, what is migration? So low migration inks and coatings uh, were mentioned on the prior slide. Um, what it simply is, it's the transfer of components from a package into food items. Uh, various regulations have been established which limit the allowable amount of material that can migrate into a food item and still be deemed safe for consumption. Often the allowable limits are far below a level which you'd be visible with a, with a simple eye and require specialized analytical testing to verify suitability. Uh, some materials, some examples of materials that have been found to migrate over the years might include mineral oils, plasticizers, uh, unreacted uh, UV or EV monomers, photoinitiators, sometimes pigments. And there's a few methods of uh, that migration can occur. Um, the two primary methods which migration occur is penetration through the substrate, which uh, can vary by the permeability of the substrate. But the most common mode of migration is simply offsetting of, to the backside or backside transfer, while printed materials are stacked, uh, perhaps in the rewind or at the end of press. Once again, the levels at which regulators are interested in is far lower than you would uh, be able to see, you know, visually detect. But with the analytical testing, they can be quantified. Um, another route is gas permeation. I point these types of migration out 
as EB inks and coatings generally perform consistently very well with regards to limiting the amount of components that can migrate. Um, you know, suitability to meet various regulatory limits can be accomplished through uh, laboratory testing. Um, EB offsets characteristically have low odor properties, as mentioned earlier. Uh, EB inks do not contain photo initiators, and that's a significant advantage over UV inks, as the photo initiator and UV inks are not only the greatest potential source of migration, but can also be the primary cause of residual odors in certain UV inks. Additionally, unlike uh, conventional oil based uh, offset inks, uh, EB offset inks do not have a vegetable oil smell. Um, EB offset inks, uh, due to their cross linking, after exposure to the EV unit, possess strong resistance to various chemicals, but also develop strong structural properties and can be processed immediately after being cured. So additionally, as long as the electron beam is operating, EV inks can provide consistent results as mentioned earlier. The EV unit, unlike UV, does not degrade over time and output scales better to press speed. EV inks provide the opportunity to surface print, reverse print, or even laminate. And the use of various EV coatings can provide opportunities for lightweight and packaging. Additionally, the use of alternate matte or texture coatings can provide brand owners an opportunity to differentiate their package or to enhance interaction with customers. Now, for reverse print applications, it's worth noting that the opacity of a last down EB flexo white is greater than a comparable solvent flexo white. Uh, and as you may recall in an earlier slide, the EB flexo white has higher solids and can also carry more pigment during application. In terms of some of the applications where EB's current uh, inks and coatings are currently used. Um, you know, the applications can range from rigid substrates uh, such as folding carton or poly coated substrates to use on various films and flexible packaging designs. The combinations include surface print and reverse print uh, shrink labels as well. Uh, in terms of cost, you know, with all the benefits that have been highlighted, I mean, the next question you may have is, you know, what does it cost? Well, on a per pound basis or per kilo basis, you know, EV is higher compared to a solvent uh, lamination ink. However, when you begin to look at applied costs, they begin to equal out. You know, EV inks do not dry um, on press, so there's less waste between startup and shutdown. Additionally, the film weight of the applied offset of EV ink is much lower compared to a solvent-based ink. Um, you can expect uh, you know, less than half a pound uh, or less than half a pound to uh, uh, half a gram to, to one gram per uh, square meter, be a typical film weight. Um, kind of shifting gears, uh, you know, I've talked about EB offset inks and their benefits, you know, and they include a reduction of VOC emissions and conservation of resources and improvement to the bottom line, but I want to shift gears and, and introduce an alternate, uh, you know, EB flexo option. Um, while EB offset offers several uh, advantages some printers especially those already heavily invested in or experienced with flexo may simply be reluctant to change but still wish to reduce their carbon footprint so for those out there i, I want to introduce the gelflex eb now, gelflex eb is primarily targeted for printers and, and brand owners seeking for lightweighting options uh, through the elimination of lamination layers uh, gelflex eb inks are fluid just like a flexo ink uh, they print on a standard CI flexo press. What makes them unique is that the flexo inks rapidly climb in viscosity after being applied, and they allow subsequent colors to be trapped on while the inks are still wet. Uh, Gelflex inks have been developed for use in a wide range of applications, much like the EB inks, offset inks, and they found use for food packaging, pet foods, some various household products, both indoor and outdoor. Uh, now, for outdoor applications, Gelflex EV inks are particularly well suited for lawn and garden applications by offering superior adhesion and durability properties compared to uh, conventional systems. Now, as mentioned earlier, Gelflex EV inks are applied on a standard CI flexo press. Now, while solvent inks or water based inks must be dry between each print unit, the Gelflex EV inks only require airflow between the color units to evaporate a small amount of solvent. Now each print remain, each ink remains wet, uh, wet to the touch as it rotates uh, to the next print unit, and subsequent colors can trap on top. Now, optionally, a coating could be applied in the last unit, and the, the still wet gel flex inks and coatings will pass under the electron beam and turns to a solid at that point. Uh, the printed piece is immediately ready for any additional processing or converting. Gelflex EV inks offer a combination of scuff 
abrasion and chemical resistance. Additionally, with higher pigment loads, they allow for much finer line screens and lower BCM analogs to be used. So this enables much higher resolution images with less dot gain. In fact, we can get down to as low as a 0.4% dot on a test image. Now, when an EB coating is applied, it allows for possible lamination replacement. So Gelplex compared to other Flexo ink technologies essentially combines some of the best attributes of solid and Flexo with UV Flexo inks and improves upon them. So water-based inks require more heat to evaporate water and thus limit press speeds. Solvent inks, on the other hand, require less heat and therefore allow for higher press speeds. However, solvent inks don't inherently have any cross-linking and will be less chemically resistant. UV inks add cross-linking, yet speeds may be slower than the solvent presses. So Gelflux incorporates the speed of solvent flexo with a cross-linking UV. However, unlike UV, EB dose remains consistent while the EB curing is operational. Uh, UV lamp output can, uh, can degrade over time, and printers have methods to compensate for loss of UV output, but EB simply has one less uh, thing to worry about, and thus leading to more consistency in the printed piece. Uh, of course, there are questions about impact to the bottom line. As mentioned, Gelflex EB offers high press speeds, similar to solvent inks, which means printers can maintain or gain efficiency. Now, efficiency gains are also realized because Gelflex inks instantly cure and can be immediately ready for further processing. In fact, if an EB coating is applied instead of a lamination layer, an entire offline process can be eliminated while also reducing the overall weight of the package. Gelflex EB can provide a drastic reduction in solvent emissions compared to conventional solvent inks. Not only are they higher solid inks, but uh, pigment loading is, can be higher. Uh, the combined effect is a potential for an 80% reduction in solvent emissions. Now, additionally, with the potential to eliminate a lamination layer, it provides an opportunity for package lightweighting or the opportunity for monolayer film printing, which uh, others have already discussed as well. And you know, I'll touch briefly on the coatings. I mean, coatings serve both a functional as well as an aesthetic purpose. They can be used in place of a lamination layer. They impart durability and resistance properties, um, but they can also make a package stand out. So there's multiple gloss levels available, whether it's gloss, satin, matte. Uh, some special effects can also be achieved and they can be applied over a range of ink systems. So uh, they can be applied over EB offset, EB flexo inks, uh, certain water-based or certain solvent inks as well. Uh, but you know, Gelflex inks uh, also uh, can meet migration limits established by various regulatory agencies and meet requirements of several brand owners' packaging requirements. So Gelflex EB is low odor uh, as well as ideally suited for food packaging. And with that, I'd like to thank you. Thank you very much, Mike, for your presentation. Uh, we have very interesting uh, you know, thoughts that we have learned this evening. And I think the, the question ask session, a couple of questions probably are very interesting, which probably you'll be able to answer them for us. Okay, uh, we'll go to uh, last presenter, but not not the least. It's it's the most exciting thing for our reason, I suppose, uh, a technology that that really uh, is very interesting to learn and know about. And um, uh, we're going to hear from Philip Ferrer, who's from Comexi, is a brand manager and a business development manager for uh, Comexi and uh, he's uh, a technical engineer in industrial electronics with an MBA program and he has several patents in the field of process automation. Philip has 27 years experience in R&D and engineering, customer support, sales and uh, right now he's the brand manager and business development manager at Comexi Offset Printing. So that's what we're going to hear from him now and he's also the technical advisor uh, with a multi-technology expertise supporting customers in finding the suitable solutions for all the processes related to the flexible packaging and labeling uh, business. So over to you, Philip. We are going to hear something very interesting about Offset CI evolution. Please go ahead. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation in this uh, seminar and congratulations to the previous uh, speakers that presented the presentations was very very exciting and with uh, very interesting topics. I will extend uh, some of the uh, topics already discussed and I will focus uh, my presentation 
to uh, the offset technology. Uh, I'm not going deep in my video already presented by Ben, and I uh, will explain a little bit of the technology, uh, some of the values and advantages of this technology, and I will also uh, talk about uh, some applications and examples that uh, the current users in the market using this technology are uh, proposing to the market and uh, selling already current uh, packaging with some advantages. And I will finish with a wrap up uh, and summary of this uh, technology. This is uh, the machine uh, how it looks like. Is This is the second uh, generation of the machine and uh, this was launched already this year. And uh, the standard machine is equipped with a 17 units offset plus uh, one flexo all around a central drum. The benefit of applying this uh, hybrid technology offset plus flexo in a central drum uh, with EV coatings is to move the advantages of the offset EV into the flexible packaging, mainly and labels. Why we apply the central drum is uh, to be capable to print with uh, thinner and elastic films uh, that typically are in the flexible packaging because the offset technology, offset TV, as already mentioned by my previous speakers, is existing in the market for many applications for a long time, in car work, in labels, and this is already current in the market for a long time. What does uh, Comexi presented with this novelty is uh, to combine this uh, technology with the central plan that uh, uh, offers the, the, the movement of these benefits into the flexible market. We have already uh, sold more than 20 presses in the market and uh, some of the customers already repeated. We are proud to have uh, some of the references customers in, in the market with leaders in the market in all, uh, all around the world. And uh, this year already installing uh, new five presses, uh, for example, Total Flex in Brazil, Royal Sense in uh, Netherlands or Jimenez Colleri in Spain, who already acquired the second press, but also worldwide leaders like uh, Chemos Vita Speed Group, with also two presses and Amcor as a reference uh, customer uh, worldwide as well. Uh, why offset is the best solution for a greenfield plan? It's a simpler process because uh, the pre press is much uh, simpler and uh, you can move the design directly from the uh, design, the, the marketing file, into the offset press much easier, much faster. The inks has a length, uh, less consumption, has a completely solvent free, and the plates are fully recyclable aluminum. So the uh, total process is much simple because uh, do not require complex uh, uh, storage for the inks and dangerous uh, process with solvents that this will be solved with this uh, technology. This is one example of the the uh, ink storage. Uh, the, this is the storage of uh, our customer SP Group. The storage is just next to the machine because it's uh, solvent free. The pods are much, uh, much lower, much uh, small. And this shows you the uh, paste ink that uh, it uh, provides less in consumption. Uh, for that reason, the pods are much smaller, like uh, three uh, kilos. Uh, you see in this graphic that the consumption in uh, in, uh, wet is much less compared to the other uh, technologies, mainly because it's 100% solids, and it's the same grammage in wet than at the end uh, when it's dry in the, the packaging in the film. The ink does not dry; is a much uh, um, uh, cleaning uh, machine because the inks never dry, so you don't have to uh, clean the machine every week. Could be the, the inks could be in the, in the machine for even two weeks. Has less odor and low migration, and it's completely packaging approval. It's a material technology, as already mentioned, uh, existing in the market for cardboard and labels for many years. And we also tested with several uh, suppliers, and uh, with some of them, uh, we already developed a wide range of applications for our customers in the field. Now I will uh, go straight to the uh, advantages of the offset printing and starting with the sustainability. It's a solvent-free technology, 
has less energy consumption and less in consumption already mentioned. It is a high quality printing technology with a higher resolution and it's uh, good for uh, contrast and nice fadings. It's the best technology to apply the extended color one because the higher resolution and uh, you can print with the same uh, print unit from the highlights to the solids with uh, all uh, range of uh, dot gain. Is a technology providing very fast time to market. It's like digital. You can move from design into the press in a few minutes. It's fast for, uh, from plane making and it's fast for plane mounting. The plates are uh, very economic. Uh, plates can cost between five to seven euros each plate and it's fully uh, recyclable aluminium plate that you can even recover uh, one around one euro per kilo uh, when you recycle as uh, pure aluminium. Because the high quality and the benefits on the extended gamut and because the low cost of plates, this technology offers you the capabilities to print in uh, multiple SKUs very easily because it's flexible changing the designs and combining multiple SKUs in a single run. Nevertheless, this technology is faster like uh, digital uh, with a fast time to market and low cost plates uh, like uh, low cost uh, papers like digital. But this technology is uh, productive and efficiency like conventional uh, flex on review with a high printing speeds and wide, uh, wide uh, width of material to be printing. Also efficiency because we equipped this uh, machine with a robotized uh, system that uh, allows a fast changeover uh, while the operator can uh, change the film or uh, create a new job. Talking about the cost, uh, our technology is uh, the most efficient in cost in uh, short and medium runs. This shows uh, an example of a new job where the, the cost of the prepress increases uh, the, the cost per square meter printed when we are talking about short runs. The impact of the uh, uh, expensive plates or review cylinders uh, uh, it makes it difficult to be competitive in a very short run, uh, while the offset, the low cost plates, allows you uh, this competitivity. Regarding digital, the cost of the inks makes it also difficult to compete uh, with uh, conventional technologies at uh, large runs. So, ideal from 3,000 meters to 40,000 meters, even that we have customers running large jobs over 300,000 meters. In terms of cost, also multiple SKUs uh, printing will be a high benefit for this technology because when you combine four designs together, uh, you uh, avoid three changeovers and you avoid three uh, times uh, the waste and you make uh, the, the changeover four times more faster and efficient. So this converts the short run like 10,000 meters in uh, with the four SKUs in four, four SKUs together that uh, will be uh, a total of 40,000 uh, square meters printed uh, with high efficiency. Some examples in flexible packaging uh, from our customers and you can find in their websites if you look uh, uh, a leaf or SP group or Amcor uh, or Chemosbit in their websites you will find all kind of uh, applications to be done in all kind of uh, markets and mainly the benefits already explained it, about the quality, the sustainability, the fast time to market and the low cost of plates. Talking about recyclability is a growing pressure from uh, consumer, from governmental and also from the market leaders targeting recyclability uh, for the coming years. Comexi doing it safelex, so we are committed to this uh, recyclability. And I will, uh, I will explain a little bit about the guidelines, I'm not talking too much deep into, because uh, you can find this already in the in the websites of uh, Safelex or the, the recommendations, mainly to use monofilms, uh, laminated pure uh, polyethylene or pure uh, polypropylene focus in mono layers instead of lamination products the total of uh, percentage of the polyethylene or polypropylene uh, should be over 90 percent it's recommended to avoid uh, mixed structures of paper plastic or aluminum plastic and also to avoid uh, combination uh, with uh, polyamides and pvc instead of this 
we use a, a barrier layers better with allox, CIOX, AOH, initialized, or with a barrier coatings. To reduce the layers uh, at the total thickness and the total density should be lower than one gram uh, cubic centimeter, and to minimize the lamination adhesives uh, lower than 5%, as well as the total inks and coatings lower than 5%. The design is better, lighter uh, colors, and the complementary uh, spout zippers and other uh, same uh, material as the film. With these uh, recommendations, we did uh, several uh, um, solutions already mentioned by previous speakers that we can propose a uh, laminated uh, BOP or polyethylene MDO. And the advantage here from our technology is first, we will print with high quality uh, all the advantages of the offset already mentioned. But in addition, we will uh, also have uh, improvement in the uh, external layer of the oriented polyethylene or the MDO. Well, I already mentioned by in Brangwala that the uh, cross-linking of the electron beam that will cure the inks and the coat uh, the inks in this case will partially cross-link the polyethylene in this external layer. The penetration of the electrons uh, will depend on the voltage. In this case, in a thinner uh, MDO, will cross the complete MDO, giving additional uh, resistance on temperature in this external layer after lamination. Some examples uh, we made al already with uh, com with a uh, project together with Dow and uh, and uh, Syntagon. In this case, they already tested this film printed with electron beam, and they tested at full speed in the packaging line, uh, proving the benefits of this uh, technology with the high quality printing and increased uh, properties of the MDO. Another solution is when we print surface, and in this case, uh, a high barrier construction polyethylene. Uh, in this case, is a, a project we made already with uh, Dow and Mespac. Uh, Dow provided a uh, high barrier uh, construction lower than one, and we uh, printed surface, providing the protection in surface of the uh, ED varnish. Again, we have the benefits of the offset painting with a high quality, fast time to market. In this case, we can combine different designs to make it more efficient and cost benefit uh, with multiple SKUs. And uh, the EV varnish that is uh, one of the most resistant varnish in the market because it's uh, strong for scratch, strong for uh, resistance in temperature, chemicals already mentioned. And this will give complete protection outside to uh, fully uh, be capable to seal the, 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 this package uh, with high efficiency. Other applications in the market uh, from our customers, in this case in uh, Kemosvit in Slovakia or in Korea, uh, they were awarded by the development of paper printing instead of plastics uh, with this technology providing, uh, again, the benefits of the, the offset printing and EV coatings. Another advantage, uh, taking uh, uh, consideration uh, some uh, products that require um, high uh, temperature process, uh, like retort, uh, the EV coating will provide high resistance. In this case, we uh, demonstrated two uh, kind of packages where the laminated uh, package can resist up to 121 degrees 60 minutes uh, for retort application, in this case laminated, and the same package when it's printed surface and protected by the EV varnish can resist up to 130 degrees uh, 90 minutes. Because the inks and coatings also are high resistant to the chemicals, uh, big advantages on chemicals and cosmetic uh, applications that our customers can offer to market in a thinner films and less barrier. In labels, we have also uh, some uh, references in the market, uh, as Cosapac or uh, Inez Godoy, uh, CCL labels, or, uh, or Kilsato in Russia. And uh, we uh, can provide a wide range of applications in minimal labels, uh, fringe sleeves, wrap round, and even uh, self adhesive labels. The multiple SKUs will be the advantage here. We are providing uh, support for the technology, for the offset printing. But not only there, we can provide also support for the applications. Because in Comexi, uh, we have the uh, technological center, uh, where our best uh, knowledge is there 
to support our customers not only in uh, printing, not only in lamination, in slitting, but also with uh, final applications. We can uh, support in which are the right combinations and the right process to build your application with the EV technology. In summary, this technology can offer you short and medium runs uh, benefits, uh, not limited there, also life runs, and a fast changeover, reducing the stocks, printing on demand, like the digital, with a very low cost uh, of plates and very fast prepares. Immediate changes, so changing the, the, the logos, the text, it will be immediately, and it's a sustainability uh, technology with uh, no solvents, less uh, power consumption, and will open you the door to new opportunities, new market and new customers, because this technology will offer you the possibility to attract new customers very easily uh, with this uh, fast time to market. It's a production flexibility with a high quality and especially with EV coatings uh, capabilities. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Ben, for the opportunity. And you can mail me or uh, requesting the, the samples or any other information. Thank you very much, Philip, for your wonderful presentation. It was enlightening indeed. And uh, offset coming into the area of flexible packaging. What a great uh, way to end this, uh, uh, all the presentations this evening. Uh, since we are running out of time, I'm going to choose uh, a few questions. We have a lot of questions which have come up, a lot of interest in this region, especially for EB curing. And uh, very quickly, gentlemen, uh, speakers, if you can, take these questions who uh, you know uh, who is a relevant person to answer this i'll appreciate the first question comes from gaurav dange he's asking minimum and maximum sustainable temperature range for eb opv or in other words overprint varnish i'll repeat that minimum and maximum sustainable temperature range for eb opv can somebody answer this please uh, well, uh, EBOPVs, uh, they, they don't melt. Um, so, I mean, we, we've had heat seal operations that uh, have gone up to 400 uh, C um, in some applications. So uh, it's not like a water-based product that, that would melt in, in a, uh, a heat seal operation in terms of uh, you know, long-term exposure to heat. Uh, uh, you know, usually, we're only looking at, at heat seal operations. So you're talking you know, a small fraction of a second. Uh, um, I'm not, hopefully that answers the question. Sure. All right. Um, Taslim from Emirates Printing Press is asking this question. Energy savings between UV and EV process. That's the first question. The second question is, are EV inks and coatings, or in other words, low in migration, and are they food safe? First question is, is energy saving what is the energy savings between U, uv and eb process the second question is is eb or eb ink and coating a low migration and is it food safe well i can Mike? i can take on the the second question the uh in terms of the food safe packaging uh yes they they can be made uh food safe, food compliant, and, and be low migration. So there, there's a couple of requirements. You know, one, there, there should be certain chemicals used and not used. And, and generally, uh, you know, th that's uh, up to the individual product that, that's uh, being selected. So you can work with your ink and coating supplier to make sure you have the correct product in place for food packaging. Um, and then in terms of migration, I mean, there are some, some tests that can be performed on a printed piece. Uh, so, I mean, you know, part of it also falls upon uh, the printer converted to ensure that they you know, they're, they're printing at the proper speeds and the proper dose. But, uh, you know, once uh, some testing has been done up front, uh, you can establish a, a good manufacturing practices and, and some pr process parameters such as uh, speed and dose. And, and uh, you can be pretty confident that, yes, the package can meet low migration requirements. Uh, and like I said, once, once you perform some migration testing, you can you know, further demonstrate that, that you meet the compliance uh, of various regulations so yes it's possible well, then I'll, I'll allow somebody else to answer the energy yeah, then I'll, I'll, I'll take the question on the on the on the energy consumption um sure. just to give you a quick idea um a 1.3 meter wide electron beam equipment operating at 400 meters per minute 
um, will consume approximately, you know, between 65 to 70 kilowatt hours of, of energy, of, of power. Yes, there is nitrogen in requirement in there. And our estimate is, is that same unit operating at 400 meters per minute will consume close to about 120 cubic meters per hour of nitrogen. And um, so I do not have a direct comparison of a, of a UV energy consumption, but if somebody, you know, if they're using UV today or they can ask the UV supplier, but in my opinion, EB is, is definitely a lot more efficient because you don't need any interstation UV curing. And secondly, UV as one of the charts from, I think it was Mike who said that, that UV curing speed to obtain high speeds of 400 meters per minute is not very easy. It is quite difficult to obtain high speeds of 400 meters per minute um, with UV. With EB, you can get these high speeds and energy consumption is, is, is as I mentioned, for a 1.3 meters around 65 to 70 kWh. Thank you. Thank you. I can add, maybe I can add on this topic and to UV oh. some additional points where EV is a completely safe process, uh, while UV is uh, not, uh, it's quite risky in terms of indicators, and uh, the, the speed will be um, uh, depending on the uh, speed of the cross-linking of the ink before rewinding the, the ink. Uh, the EV inks will be completely uh, odor-free, and this is another advantage. Uh, also, EV is a cold process, while the UV uh, typically uh, applies a lot of heating, on the especially critical for uh, shrinkable uh, uh, films, and this will limit also the, the speed. Brilliant. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, moving forward, we have a question from Mr. Charbel al -Khuri. What are the requirements uh, what, what, what are the required investments on a conventional CI Flexo machine to move from SB inks to EB Flexo inks? And are there any grades of EB ink for Grevio? If we talk about the, the Flexo machine, uh, I would say that adding the, 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 the EB part it's uh, just adding the the EV curing equipment, which cost uh, Imran Guava can explain better than me, uh, and and a small modifications on the machine. So I would say that on top of a normal machine, if we think about a normal solvent machine, and we want to have a hybrid machine that like the one we presented, we should talk about uh, an increase of cost of let's say 20 percent plus the EV unit, right? And uh, for the rotogravure inks for EV, as far as I know, they are not, but probably Mike can answer better than me. Uh, I can answer some of this. So, I mean, in terms of uh, yeah, additions to the press, I mean, you'll, you'll need uh, stronger pumps uh, and maybe some different hoses, uh, perhaps uh, in, the, uh, in the press. I mean, the viscosity of the you know, gel flex to the flexo EB inks are, are a little higher viscosity than the conventional solvent inks. So, you might need some stronger uh, pumps, some stronger uh, mixtures, perhaps, um, and then just to make sure that the hoses that are used are compatible with the uh, with the EB uh, inks that you're using. Um, and and the other thing that might change would be on the uh, the doctor blade assembly. Um, you might need a stronger doctor blade, and and there might be some some changes to the doctor blade chamber that can improve uh, performance there. Uh, in terms of Gravier EB inks, uh, uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, not commercially uh, available at this time that I'm aware of. Yes, thank you. Thank I just you I just want to add, Ben. Uh, if anybody is interested, you know, uh, we need to discuss with them regarding the EB equipment because it is retrofitable, but we need to get the press lay down, press drawing, and all that because EB equipment will need some space, and depending upon the press configuration where and how to install the EB unit, we need to discuss it. There are different types of EB units available. So so, so if there is an interest, uh, please have us contact both myself and Jody, and then we can take it from there. Brilliant. Uh, just to dwell on that point, there is a, 
customer here asking, uh, can we see the layout of the offset CI machine? Uh, this is from NAPCO. NAPCO Ellie is asking. I'll pass on that information, Ellie, to the, the gentleman. So they'll be in touch with you. All right. Um, moving forward very quickly, I think we're running out of time, but we'll take another three or four more quick questions. Uh, at what lowest treatment level we can print with this technology? Uh, Asher Farooq from uh, Coris Packaging is asking this. So the lowest treatment level of the corona or electron beam? Uh, uh, we can print. Uh, I, I think it's he's talking about the EB. Yeah. So basically, I mean, just uh, sorry, I want to... I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, he's mentioning uh, it's the corona. Yeah. Corona. So for corona, you know, we need for plastic films the dyne level to be close to about over 40, around 40, 42 dynes per centimeter. For the EB inks to 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 give yeah. proper wettability and adhesion. So dwelling with uh, Asher from uh, 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 from uh, Coris, why do you need to print offset inks with one initials of uh, flexor unit in new modification? Uh, can we print multiple substrates in the in this machine, like uh, PET slash OPP and low micron foil? I don't know who can take this yes. question. Yeah, yeah, no, I will take. I will take. All we right. can print uh, a wide range of uh, materials and films. Mm -hmm. uh, already mentioned polyethylene, polypropylene, polyester. In the case of polyester, we recommend uh, chemical treated polyesters for better bond strength and adhesion. Right. And uh, uh, foil can be also printed, but uh, will require uh, for the foil will require a primer or a prepping primer uh, white or all this kind. The uh, offset CI is a kind of hybrid combining the offset and the flexor V because offset uh, applies a thinner layer of ink. And then for a high opacity white or a more grammage for a high glossy or high matte uh, varnish, we use the flexor V that can apply more grammage. But all kind of applications, we can provide uh, solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Uh, a quick question coming in from uh, Mars Kanan. He's asking, uh, is EB cured materials approved by FDA and EU legislation? Can somebody take this question? I can, I can answer that. Uh, it's similar to the earlier uh, response, uh, you know, in terms of FDA um, or, or EU regulations, I mean, there, there's a, it's not a formal uh, declaration that it meets FDA compliance, but, but one of the requirements for FDA or for EU compliance is to demonstrate that uh, you meet a migration limit. So in other words, you've got a, a limit of, of potential migration uh, from any of the components in an in ink or coating into a food package. And as long as you can demonstrate uh, through proper testing that, that your printed piece does not exceed those migration limits, um, then by FDA or, or EU regulations, then you meet um, you know, that, that's one of the requirements. You have to, to meet the migration limits. Uh, the other requirement, at least in the case of the EU, is they'll have uh, certain materials that are excluded from use. So you'd also need to work with your ink and coating supplier and verify that you're not using any materials that are excluded from use, uh, specifically in, in the case of the EU uh, or, or FDA. So um, it, it is very possible to meet the FDA as well as EU regulations. Um, uh, you know, there's also the, the good manufacturing practices too that also, you know, the GMP uh, process as well. So in other words, the, the printer would need to ensure they have some process parameters in place and, and meet those. So as long as they uh, uh, meet those requirements, yes, you can print a, a package with uh, an EB ink or an EB coating and meet FDA or EU regulations for food packaging. Right. Thank you, Mike. There's a uh, very ben, I, I just want to add a little bit more to the MNM Mars, just to reiterate, is that MNM Mars moving away from a laminate to a monolayer film, getting rid of that 18 micron of a top layer of OPP and the adhesive and staying with the cavitated OPP, surface printing it with conventional gravure rings and putting an EBO print one, it has been commercial now for over 10 years. There are at least two lines running that for Skittles as well as chocolate M&Ms. And that EB, EB lacquer is designed 
not only to meet all the migration requirements, uh, like what Mike mentioned, but it is also designed to, to release from the cold seal adhesive, you know. So you don't even need to put a silicone coating layer on top of the OPP film, which you were doing before. The EB coating itself has is designed to release from the cold seal adhesive because this is for a candy like a uh, like a like a chocolate M and M or a Skittles application. So there are a lot there's a lot of value to that. Brilliant. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this one last question I want to take before we wrap up for the evening. There are many other questions which we'll be addressing to the speakers later, but this is a very interesting question. This is for Mr. M. Rangwala from all the way from Indonesia. I'm Henki Vibhava from Indonesian Packaging Federation. Would like to ask Mr. M. Rangwala, you've explained e-beam curing works well with heat sensitive film materials because it is a very low heat application. And I'm curious, besides the advantages of, of improving adhesive application and process cost reduction, what about this advanced technology? Will it improve the barrier enhancement of film structure? It might be very attractive to many users. Yeah, um, and, and unfortunately, I want to say is that I've done a lot of work with um, people mentioned EVOH. EVOH is used a lot as a as a barrier in coax films. And EVOH, one of the big problem with EVOH is its moisture sensitivity. That means that at high humidity in places which has you know like even Spain or some in July in Boston area and all that, you do get a lot of high humidity. And that high humidity, the barrier does not function very well especially specifically for EVOH so one option was is that can I cross link the polyethylene and maintain the uh, the moisture sensitivity or uh, reduce the moisture sensitivity of EVOH unfortunately we could not do that and there is no current technologies either using EBOPVs or cross linking the film to improve the barrier properties of um, of um, of a as required by flexible packaging. Okay, there is a request from somebody. I promise you this is the last question. I'm not gonna go over this. Please allow me to ask this question for the sake of Nitin from Sunpack. He's asking this question. How do we get metallic effect if required when we consider such printing systems? I don't know whether he's mentioning CI Flexo or CI Offset, but I don't know if, if you can answer this, please. Uh, well, there, there are some combinations. One is uh, the in the case of gel flex, for example, you could potentially combine a, a solvent uh, ink in combination with gel flex, uh, but you might not get the same resistance properties if you go with the all uh, straight gel flex system. Now, we have also looked at uh, developing a, a metallic gel flex ink, uh, at least in the lab here. So, I mean, those are being looked at and, and uh, they you know, might be possible. We just haven't tested them yet. So. Um, you know, that might be a future option as well as to have a, a metallic gel flex ink, uh, but like I said, it's, uh, it's being developed. Brilliant. Yeah, Thank you, Mike. Some, some of the CA users mm -hmm. that uh, had uh, several uh, options for metallization. One is obvious, laminate with a metallic film, but then uh, applying the metallic inks can be applied uh, by offset, flex OIB, or uh, review or flex in line units, uh, solving base. This can be also feasible. Of course, the higher grammage you apply, better uh, optics for the metallics. So it depends on each technology, how much grammage you can apply for these uh, nice uh, metallic inks. But for flexible packaging, the easier solution is to laminate with a metallic uh, I, I just want to add a little bit more to that for offset printing, like what Philip is saying is that uh, the companies like Eckhart and all that who are already making, you know, they have on a on a CI flex or um, CI offset, you do have a off flexo unit. So you can put EB curable metallic inks as well using a flexo station because you need to have a little bit higher grammage. So that is possible. They've done that already on not on a CI offset, but on an inline offset um, for some coffee paperboard type of applications. So they're already doing that today. 
All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for all your presentations. And uh, it was really thought provoking and enlightening. And uh, I'm sure that our attendees uh, this evening have learned a lot, including me. And, uh, you know, uh, as the topic for the evening, evolving EB curing technology for flexible package printing and coating. Yeah, the technology has indeed evolved over the years, as we heard how the history of EB curing from Mr. Rangwala as he was explaining how old this, this, this technology is and how it has evolved over the years and it has moved from you know process to process and now we have this technology in both offset and in flex so complementing each other and uh, that's and 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 also we saw some uh, research going into using it for the digital use as well which I'm sure it's going to uh, evolve and come to you know, uh, happen. It's going to happen very soon in the digital print space as well. So it's really a, a great uh, privilege to have all of you here. Uh, especially, I want to thank uh, uh, Jody and Philip from Comexi and Mike uh, from INX and uh, Mr. Rangwala from ESI for joining us. And special thanks for both Mike and Rangwala because they had to get up very early this morning, I suppose, because uh, you know, for uh, we, we are. Uh, it's it's evening for us here to make it convenient for all our attendees they have they have got up pretty early and uh, special thanks for both of you and of, of course thanks for both philip and jody as well and for making this webinar very uh, very very in, uh, uh, useful and you know knowledgeable for all of us and uh, last but not least this particular webinar will be also uh, viewable for all of our uh, uh, attendees uh, and as a video link will be coming to you and you can again if you want to read uh, uh, view it again you can do so and last but not least we will also be having a final takeaway of this webinar in the form of a report in the upcoming edition of packaging MEA magazine both in print and online so that's where we'll be able to put all these wonderful points and thoughts which gentle, these gentlemen have shared we're going to put them all together so that it's be it'll be a good white paper for all of us to learn and uh, per perhaps uh, apply to our uh, production in the days to come very soon. So thank you once again, all of you for joining us, all our attendees particularly for joining us. I hope this was useful for all of you. If you have any questions, please you can address it directly to the to the gentlemen who have spoken now, or if you don't have their details, you can email us and we can forward it to them. And also very special thanks to all the speakers this evening. Thank you very much and see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.